All right, in this session, we're going to talk about active yield calibration on the S series machines. First, to start off with some physical components, we have our pressure plates. We've got three of them here on our cross armor shields. Secondly, we have our moisture sensor up here, and our mass flow sensor is up in the grain tank there by the fountain auger. We want to make sure those are clean of debris because that will affect yield accuracy. The other thing that can affect yield accuracy is our setting and tension of this clean grain elevator chain. We want to make sure it is tight and we want to make sure that our paddles are not worn or rubbing against this housing in any way. Now we're going to go into how the active yield system actually works. The active yield is an active calibration that provides continuous calibration of the mass flow sensor through three load cells that are installed in the grain tank. The load cells in the grain tank estimate the change in the weight of grain as the grain tank fills, and then the AYM controller compares the grain tank load cell data to the clean grain elevator mass flow sensor data and adjust the mass flow sensor calibration curve in order to minimize the error. So your load cells are your constant and that compares the mass flow sensor data and changes it accordingly. Now you're not recording the load all the time. What an active yield load is, is it starts collecting that load around 2,000 pounds until around 6,600 pounds. So that load is actually only collecting over about 4,600 pounds. And that's from about the top of the cross auger shields to a little less than half of a bin full. And that load is going to be saved as long as the harvested crop is uniform uh, to support the constant flow during load collection and you have not encountered any um, slopes, roll or pitch that is greater than four degrees as well as there hasn't been any interruptions with grain flow during load collection. So how the system works is you need to have 15 loads acquired first before it will actually start to correct that calibration curve. Some best practices to achieve maximum accuracy with active yield systems is to avoid those flow interruptions when calibrating. Uh, to do that, you wanna start a long harvest run with an empty grain tank and you don't wanna unload on the go during calibration. You don't want to stop to get out and check something. You don't want to uh, stop the separator. Um, you also want to reduce the flow variation. Uh, so you want to try to keep that consistent ground speed as well as that consistent cut width. So target those constant flow rate areas first, uh, such as a long harvest run. You also want to avoid the calibration timeout, uh, which is 400 seconds. So if the system doesn't achieve that 4,600 pounds in 400 seconds, it will reject that load. Uh, a couple way, one way to do that is to increase the ground speed and cut width to decrease time to collect the load. This can happen if we have uh, some really low yielding crops. Majority of the time, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we also wanna increase opportunities to get samples accepted. So you want to unload the grain tank soon after sample has completed. Like I said, it completes at around 6,600 pounds. And so if you unload, make sure you unload below the cross augers and that way it will start collecting a load again. Uh, as well as terrain, uh, you wanna try to target any flat or near flat terrain available. Like I said, uh, a slope or positive or negative four degrees, if it encounters that, it will reject that load because that grain can shift in the tank. It is what them load cells are doing, they are modeling the grain in the tank 
And so if there's any shift, that's going to cause an inaccuracy, so that's why it rejects the load. A couple things that we need to make sure are done in order to maximize our accuracy is performing a mass flow vibration calibration with the header attached and the combine grain tank empty. We want to run that as if we were actually harvesting the crop. So header at uh, the cutting height, we want that at full throttle with the header and separator engaged. And then we also want to calibrate the moisture sensor temperature uh, to complete that and and then we want to calibrate the moisture sensor temperature so that it matches the outside ambient air temperature. There is some potential for loads to get rejected. If there is inconsistent flow, if there's been uneven loading or green tank sample shift detected, um, if there's the pitch or roll too large of a slope, and like I said, that's four degrees, uh, which is a 7% grade. Uh, or the collection has been interrupted, such as uh, unloading on the go, disengaging separator, um, whatever it may be. In order to use the active yield system, we need to first enable it. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we have calibrated the mass flow vibration and the moisture sensor temperature. To do that, we will go to the men main menu and then the combine. And then we need to go to the book and the wrench tab B. From there, the calibration will give us the drop down menu to find mass flow vibration and the moisture sensor temperature. After those have been completed, we can then hit button F, and then we will hit button H, and then we will hit button D. And then we need to make sure that there is a check mark next to active yield. Also, you see above that there is the moisture correction. We need to make sure that we have that set properly in order for the system to work correctly. For example, if the elevator said you're cutting the crop at 13% moisture, but the combine said 12%, you would have to change the moisture correction to 1.0. We'll then hit button F, and then we'll hit button G, and then hit button J. This is the active yield status page. You can see several things here. This is where you could put in the yield correction percentage, if need be. You can also see the accepted loads, and you can see when the last load was accepted. You can also see the bar graph below that that shows the quality of the loads. You want to have four bars because that means you have five or more loads accepted. Now you first have to have 15 loads accepted before the system starts adjusting on the go. If you feel like the active yield system is off on a field totals basis, we can put a yield offset correction in. We have to harvest at least 15 accepted active yield loads first before adjusting the correction. If we adjust it before, it's going to be constantly chasing the offset values and provide inconsistent field values. The way to make this correction is we want to harvest and scale check five full grain tank loads and compare the combined yield totals to scale weights for the five load totals. 
And then we can calculate the difference between actual combine weights and measured weights as a percentage. It's good to repeat this a few times to get an average of the whole system in order to put a correction in. If we're low on the yield, we need to put a positive offset in. If we are high, we need to put a negative offset in the system. A couple of tidbits on the active yield system is performing a manual yield calibration will not achieve faster active yield performance. Active yield still has to achieve its first 15 loads in order to start changing the calibration curve. In order to get there faster, it is recommended to unload as soon as the active yield load has been collected. And the, that can be found on the active yield status page. The other thing about active yield is it can be retrofitted on most S-series combines starting in 2012 and on up. If you have any questions about active yield, please contact your local landmark CTS to get answers.